April 2019, our family flew to Ireland. We took the bus in Dublin and rode on a double-decker. There were my kids and my wife. Here's the pass we used. Our hotel was right nearby the St. Patrick's Cathedral. Here's the flyer that tells you about it. And here's the symbol that was on the front of the gates. And here's my daughter by St. Patrick's Cathedral. While my daughters and wife were at the St. Patrick's Cathedral, my son and I decided to get some cookies and go play at St. Stephen's Green. We kicked the soccer ball around. My son did not have the same appreciation for those cookies as did I, so I graciously ate the rest of them. This is uh, right near Dublin Castle in downtown Dublin. There isn't much of a castle left anymore, but there are some really cool sites like that, these fields with the nice um, designs on them. And here's our family hanging out. We're a little bit tired at this point. And there's the entrance to that garden you just saw. This external part of the Dublin Castle is one of the final parts left. My daughter and my son in their little blue cages. And what you're about to see is the last remaining part of the Dublin Castle on the right with all the scaffolding there. This part, the next few slides are interior shots of the Chapel Royal in Dublin, which is now a D consecrated or something. It's, it's not any particular religion now, but it has some great history behind it, which I cannot recall any of right now. After this segment of our tour, we headed over to Trinity College to see the Book of Kells and the Long Hall. This staircase was also in the Long Hall with all the library books, as well as the very first... Um, Gaelic harp or something like that. Then we hit downtown Dublin. The Disney store with the only Irish Mickey in the world. We then headed inland and went to the Rock of Cashel, which is illuminated with these great colorful lights. That's what we looked, saw as we came in. This is the back part of the apartment where we stayed. And this is a view from our apartment to the Rock of Cashel in the background. There's the actual apartment and our beautiful rental car, an Alhambra. The Rock of Cashel was amazing. There was so much to see there. Especially if you don't have young children, you can spend a long time there listening to the tour guides who are deeply knowledgeable about all aspects of these combined structures which are basically sitting atop a three acre chunk of rock out in the middle of nowhere in Ireland. Um, there's been a lot of religious and political battles fought here and the history goes back to over a thousand years. While most of it is in ruins, they have done a great job at attempting to restore much of it and there's a lot that's accessible to the public. It's worth every penny to go take the tour of this amazing place. Celtic crosses abound. A view from the gas station. The entrance. map of the place. Part of the Rock of Cashel includes here Cormac's Chapel with its ornate but yet very dilapidated interior. At the apex of the ceiling is a small hole at the cross section which allows the Holy Spirit to come in and out. Although rather run down today, in its heyday it looks something like this. 
that picture on the right with the ornate frescoes. But now it looks like that, even though they've tried to restore it. And then there's the sarcophagus inside of Cormac's chapel. Different parts of Cashel butt up against each other. Notice the close seams. The exterior of Cormac's chapel, also on the rock of Cashel. Our tour guide, whose name is spelled C-A-T-H-A-L, and I have no idea how to pronounce that. And numerous viewpoints of the exterior. The medieval round tower, standing 92 feet high, with an entrance 12 feet above the ground. The interior of the cathedral area, where at one point in history, I believe it was in the 1700s, there was a massive battle and approximately 1,000 people were killed in this area of the castle rock and the tour guide said that legend says that they were buried excuse me piled up six deep in some areas of that cathedral Another church in the distance, in the midst of a field. Some old before and after pictures of the restoration. St. Patrick's Cross. Other artifacts recovered from the site. A miniature wooden replica of the Rock of Cashel. Rock of Cashel on Bottled Water. From the Rock of Cashel, we made our way to the Blarney Castle and its surrounding gardens. Even before we had fully arrived, we couldn't help but stop and take pictures of the awesome structure. Tickets to Blarney were expensive, but worth every penny in my opinion. There was so much to see and do, not just kiss the Blarney Stone. There were other places to explore, gardens, a huge house in the back, um, paths, all sorts of exotic plants. It was really fun. Even my youngest child thoroughly enjoyed himself here. When it came time to kiss the Blarney Stone, only one of my children was brave enough. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> Ew. That's gross. 
Here are some more viewpoints at the very top of Blarney Castle where one kisses the stone. This is the interior of the Blarney Castle proper. Adjacent to the Blarney Castle is a garden, and the section where my children and wife are standing is called the Poison Garden. They even had a marijuana plant there, and poison ivy. This large Blarney house was unfortunately not open for tours at the time we were there, but there was much to see around it. Like I said before, there were numerous paths to walk with lots of fun activities along the way. Here's a shot of the interior of the castle, and then a few more pictures at the very, very top. There were also the wishing steps, which you needed to descend and ascend with your eyes shut in order to obtain your wish. We gave it a shot. More from the garden area. Blarney House. A gated and hedge surrounding garden right next to Barney House. Profile of a witch's face in the rock. Druid's cave. At the base of the Barney Castle, um, you can't see it in this picture, but to the right is a place called Badger's Cave. Here's the entrance, and you can see the water on the ground there as you walk in. It's pretty cool. It goes back for a couple hundred feet underneath that rock, and if you're on this part, if you go to the right-hand side, there's a little area where the entrance is. This is a uh, walking away. There's a little hole. You can take a picture of it. Now these next few clips are just us driving on the left-hand side of the road through all sorts of little small towns throughout Western Ireland. Another blue, a red, a yellow. This is downtown Kenmare. So Kenmare was basically the small town where we kind of set up shop. That was our base station, and then we would take day trips from there. These are all views of downtown Kenmare. Just a very quaint town. Lots of cars there, lots of tourists. Even though it was April, there were still tons of people there. Lots of bars and pubs, places to drink and hear people sing music to you. Kenmare, like I said, is very small town, very quaint. Um... If you like to drink, it's a great place to go. It's just a nice place to hang out, and the people are so kind. Um, based on the recommendation from one of our friends, we went to a place called Patty Foley's. And Patty Foley's had live music and good food. Here are some clips. On the rail of the Okay, enough music. Um, here's where we sat, and here's the food we ate. You can see that one has uh, potatoes and lamb's meat, um, more mashed potatoes in a mug that Molly ate, and she just loved it. Tyler branched out and got pizza.
So the food was good and expensive. There was also a gift shop nearby that sold American footballs, which I thought was funny. We rented a house. Here's the house, and here it is from farther away. And here's an interior picture of the kitchen, as well as a picture of the car we rented, an Alhambra. View from the home that we rented in Kenmare. Three houses down from where we stayed were the Kilowin Burial Grounds, and here it is. It's in dilapidated form, covered in ivy, an old church with no, no roof. And I found it very interesting, the burial grounds. The Ernest John Mowerin, the composer, is buried here. Here's the entrance, and then just enjoy these next few pictures of the area. One of our highlights was visiting the Killarney National Park and Ross Castle. Ross Castle is on this map. And here's one of the very first pictures we took of Ross Castle. Ross Castle was great. Here you'll see Molly and Tyler climb around on some of the slanted rocks at the base of Ross Castle. Um, Ross Castle does charge a fee to go in, and it's by appointment. Um, they will allow you to take no pictures inside of the tour, but the tour is so well done and so interesting. And we also stopped to skip some rocks at the base of Ross Castle. My house is four. The area is so picturesque from the swans and the lake and the beautiful lush foliage everywhere. Um, this was a great part of the tour for us. Our kids had an absolutely fabulous time here. After Ross Castle, we got in the car and drove around the lake to another area to visit what is known as Muckross Friary, or uh, often called Muckross Abbey. In its central courtyard grows a beautiful old yew tree. The rest of the Abbey is so much fun. This was probably one of the best highlights of our entire trip and the kids just loved playing around and exploring. And this is where we played. So this is the entry and that's where we went in. This is where we played and ran around.
this is another place where we played, and we like playing in other parts of the, where we are right here. This is me in the picture, and Muckross Abbey had actually about seven floors total. This is where we believe that the monks used to live. So I'm on the top and Molly's on the bottom, and where Molly is is the spiral staircases. And here was a workman uh, digging a grave. At Muckross Abbey, there was a big cemetery, and this is me in the backyard. A teeny plant had taken root at the top of this entrance. There were lots of dark hallways that you could go through and explore. The ledge behind us is where my dad fell and got a big goose egg. This is me upstairs from Muckrose Abbey. We then drove to Torque Waterfalls. This area reminded me much of Utah's mountainous areas. This is Molly and me acting like Gollum from Lord of the Rings. This is the Gap of Dunlow, and we weren't s supposed to ride with in it with our car, but we didn't know, so we accidentally drove through it, and it took a while, and we, we had to squish through because there's other cars coming the other way, so it took a while, and we finally made it out. And there's a car right behind us driving through, too. My mom and I were definitely the most scared, but I'm overall glad that we did it because it was an adventure. And plus, at the end, there was a really great gift shop that I could get some of my souvenirs at. Why were you scared, Molly? I was scared because there were cars coming the opposite direction, and we could have easily got hurt and crashed. Oh. Get past you on that side. They, oh, there's tons of room on that side. Okay, Dad, go to the side. Wait. Just a minute. He's gonna wave first. You gotta wave. You gotta be here. When we were driving, we saw some cool goats. And here is a lovely zoom up of my father's face. Every half a mile or so, there were pull-off areas on the road where one could pull over so that oncoming traffic could pass you by. Going out of our comfort zone, taking a bit of a risk. Oh my Whoa. Turn. Okay. He's gonna wave first. We gotta wave. He's got a beard. I think I saw like that <laughs> earlier. They can't get past the silver car back here. On the right, you will see the pull-off area. A few kilometers outside of Kenmare was a place called Molly Gallivan's Cottage and Traditional Farm. This was a wonderful place for children to explore and learn a little bit more about Irish history and culture. Meanwhile, 
Back at Molly Gallivan's, this imposing figure, which was hand carved from the Copyright. remains of a pine tree in 2002, represents it. the first Copyright settlers in Bonon over 6,000 years ago. The people who have left us such an amazing. Here are some views right from Molly Gallivan's. This is me feeding the sheep at Molly Gallivan's. Sheepy, sheepy, sheepy. Did you pet it? He's licking my hand! It's soaking wet! We had the opportunity to feed some donkeys and it was an amazing experience. The donkeys were super sweet and loved to lick us and always wanted more food and they were just so awesome. I loved feeding the donkeys and petting them. <laughs> this is the amazing view right in front of Molly Gallivan's. This is me in front of Molly Gallivan's truck. We got to follow a map trail and found some old ruins. The statue is looking at the chief's blocks. This is us going through a tunnel and it is made out of just solid rock. Another place we visited was Garanish Island. Some people spell it Garnish, but it, either way it's pronounced Garnish Island, or something like that. The boat ride was probably no more than 10 or 15 minutes to get us from the main Ireland land to Garnish Island. And we saw some seals on the boat ride. The island is covered with beautiful gardens, reminiscent of the movie The Secret Garden. I took this picture through a gate. This was a prohibited area of the island. One of my favorite pictures from the whole trip. Located on Garnish Island is a tower. Here we are standing on the tower called Martello Tower. Entrance to Martello Tower. The view from Martello Tower. More of the paths from the interior of Garnish Island. When we came upon this spot, I instantly thought of the movie The Lord of the Rings, where Arwen and Aragorn talk. And so I had my children pose, waiting for the ferry to come pick us up. After disembarking from our visit to Garnish Island, we drove back to our rental home. Upon returning to Kenmare, we came across an Irish gentleman who was out walking his dogs. Soon we were joined by the Irishman's friend from England who had a third dog, Toby, the white dog. This canine encounter turned out to be one of the highlights of our time in Kenmare.
By now our trip was coming to its conclusion, and we started to make our way back to Dublin, first stopping in the town of Adair. Part of our bucket list also included a stop at the Cliffs of Moher. These are our tickets. The cliffs were absolutely breathtaking. One of our children took advantage of this opportunity to demonstrate her Irish dancing skills. The cliffs stretched for miles upon miles. Our family had a wonderful time on this trip as we enjoyed God's beautiful creations on the island of Ireland. gas station for those who might be a little bit disturbed. As we returned through the Dublin airport, we found it quite interesting that they had little buttons you could push to tell how your experience in the bathroom was. And that was our trip. Have a great day.